my pocket, got my suit and my tie. One foot after the other to the end of the eye. Your daddy's gonna shake my hand. I'm gonna fight back tears. Everyone we know, family in the front row, everybody's here. But baby, before we say I do, the song.
be seated. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together in the sight of God, in the presence of these witnesses, to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable state instituted of God and signifying unto us the mystical union which exists between Christ and his church. It is therefore not to be entered into unadvisedly, but reverently, discreetly, and in the awe of God. And to this holy estate, these two persons come now to be joined. I charge you both, as you stand in the presence of God, before whom the secrets of all hearts are disclosed, that having duly considered the holy covenant you are about to make, you do now declare before this company your pledge of faith, each to the other. Be well assured that these solemn vows are faithfully kept, as God's word demands. And if steadfastly you endeavor to do the will of your heavenly Father, God will bless your marriage, will grant you fulfillment in it, and will establish your home in peace. Tyler, will you have this woman to be your wedded wife, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love her, comfort her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto her, so long as you both shall live. If so, your answer would be, I will. I will. Hope, will you have this man to be your wedded husband, to live together in the holy estate of matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep yourself only unto him, so long as you both shall live? If so, your answer would be, I will. 
who gives this woman to be married to this man? Kim and I. If you'll take one step back, if you'll pass your flowers for me, please. If you'll take the other hand and just relax, good dad, you may be seated. In the word of God in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the Bible speaks of the greatest gift. And it says this, if I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and have all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor, and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, and it keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Tyler, do you have special thoughts you would like to share with Hope? I do. <clears throat> um, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Your fiery passion has forged my devotion to you as a best friend, dog dad, <laughs> and soon to be your husband. <sighs> Over these past years, You've taught me what can make this short and British life so fantastic. Uh, and just getting to stand here with you today, we've been tossed by so many changing winds and breaking waves, uh, but our little lifeboat carries on. Uh, it's because of these trying tides that our sails are still in the wind, full and unafraid. <sighs> You're the sky's reassuring glow after a passing storm. You're the sun's inspiration to rise and bring with the sunset thoughts of a better tomorrow. It's okay, bro. Thanks. Thank you. Um, you good? <laughs> love you with all my heart and then some. Uh, and because I only have so many days on this earthly world, whew, I vow that none will pass without my fullest effort to remind you of what beauty you bring to my life, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Ooh. You make me the luckiest man in the world, and I vow every day to make myself worthy of that title uh, and the blessing that is your love, because you deserve the world, and I intend to deliver it. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk that. Really? You're going to give it back to her? <laughs> Take hands again, please. And look into the eyes of your bride and repeat after me. I, Tyler. I, Tyler. Take you hope. Take you hope. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I pledge you my faith. And thereto I pledge you my faith. Hope, do you have special thoughts you would like to share with Tyler? I do. <clears throat> Tyler, you're my best friend, my confidant, and my biggest supporter. I really struggle to write these to you. <laughs> how could I possibly put into words how much you mean to me? I started to take notes in my phone every time you did something that made me think, wow, I love him. But my entire notepad filled up 
and Google said to keep vows less than two minutes. <laughs> Every day, I'm in awe of you. You constantly set goals and then accomplish them. You have a positive outlook no matter the situation, and you always keep me grounded when I'm feeling overwhelmed. One of the things I admire most about you is your integrity. You say what you mean, you mean what you say, and you always follow through for the people in your life. Every day, I'm a better person simply by being around you. You constantly encourage me, you hype me up, and you support me wholeheartedly. You help me strive to be the best version of myself. You also remind me to slow down and think a little when I'm ready to dive in head first. From the moment we met, you made our relationship a priority. We quickly became a unified team, and I cannot wait to be your partner for the rest of our lives. This year, <laughs> this year was hard. It definitely tested us, but it constantly reminded me how unbelievably lucky we are to have each other. Even on my lowest days, I still felt so fortunate and overwhelmed with gratitude because I have you. And we found something that some people spend their whole lives searching for, which is a love that feels like forever is not long enough. I promise every day to keep building upon the beautiful foundation of trust and respect we've created. I promise to listen without judgment and always be your confidant. I promise to remember the things Chaplin taught us are miscellaneous. I promise to always communicate. I'm sure you never doubted that one. <laughs> I promise that there's something off the table for us to talk about. I promise to always hold your hand and give you huge hugs to squeeze all my love into you. I promise to adventure with you and to remember that if things don't go according to plan, at least we have a really good story. I promise to be your biggest supporter and to constantly remind you of how much I love you and that my love is totally unconditional. I promise to try every day to be the best wife and best friend I can be. And lastly, I promise to grow with you. I love you for the man you are today, the husband you'll be tomorrow, and the person you'll be in our future. It's not good to get me crowned here. <laughs> Look into his eyes and repeat after me. I hope. I hope. Take you, Tyler. Take you, Tyler. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. According to God's holy law. According to God's holy law. And thereto I pledge you my faith. And thereto I pledge you my faith. Tyler, do you have a ring? <laughs> yes. Whew. It's a good thing. Place this ring, this ring on the finger of your bride and repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I gave you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Hope, do you have a ring? I do. Place this ring on the finger of your groom and repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of our constant faith. Of our constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. Would you pray with me, please? O eternal God, creator and preserver of all mankind, the giver of all spiritual grace, the author of life everlasting, let your blessings descend and rest upon these, your children, whom we bless in your name. Bless this marriage and make it to them the source of abundant and enduring good. Look graciously upon them that they may love, honor, and cherish each other. May their mutual affection never know change, doubt, nor decay. Direct and strengthen them in the discharge of all of their duties. Bless the home which they establish. Teach them to order their household wisely and well, and to regard all their possessions as your gifts, to be employed in your service. May they so live together in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a heaven of blessing and a place of peace. Amen. Amen. For as much as Tyler and Hope have consented together in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God in this company, and thereto have pledged their faith each to the other, 
and have declared the same by joining hands, exchanging vows, and exchanging rings. I pronounce that they are husband and wife together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Those whom God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Would you pray with me again, please? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you. The Lord mercifully with his favor look upon you, and so fill you with all spiritual benediction and grace, that you may so live together in this life, that in the world to come you may have life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Tyler? It's time. <laughs> you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Tyler, you may kiss your bride again. That's the best red he's ever got. So don't worry about it. <laughs> Sorry. She, she's squeezing your hand. Yeah. It's a oh, if you will just um, turn and get your flowers, I will ask you to turn and face your company, and I will ask your company to rise with me. Price to pass is a kiss. <laughs> ah, real one. <laughs> I would like to introduce to you, for the very first time, Mr. Misra's Tyler Vasquez. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, who is ready for the announcement of their bridal party? Something right 
you deserve a hug every morning and butterfly kisses. All right, ladies and gentlemen. I can remember when. Fit in the palm of my hand You felt so good in it No bigger than a minute How it amazes me You're changing with every blink Faster than a flower blooms They grow up all too soon So let them be Cause they're only that way for a while Give them hope, give them praise, give them love every day Let them cry, let them giggle, let them sleep in the middle Oh, but let them I never felt so much in one little tender touch. I live for those kisses, your prayers and your wishes. And now you're teaching me how only a child can see. Tonight while we're on our knees, all I ask is please let them everybody for attending. My name is Joe Schriffler. I'm Hope's dad. And uh, my wife Kim and I and uh, Jason and Tracy Vascones, the um, parents of the groom, we're all uh, thankful that you all attended. It's been a crazy year and we understand uh, it's in difficult times. We appreciate it more than ever that you all, all made it here. So Tyler, yeah, it's happening. <laughs> we, you think you know our daughter? <laughs> You really do, but we uh, have some personality insights that we think we have to clue you into now, all right? So, and we're going to do that by telling you some anecdotes that we've experienced through uh, Hope's childhood and her, her growing up, okay? So the first one, <clears throat> Kim brought uh, Hope and a group of her cousins, Quinn, I don't know if, yes, Quinn, was Quinn there? Yes. Joey, to the movies, and while they're watching the movie, um, Kim bought a bucket of popcorn for all the children. And as the popcorn's being passed to all the child, they're all eating it, eating it, until he gets to Hope, and Hope takes an unpopped popcorn kernel and shoves it in her nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Kim is panicking, thinking this is going to require an emergency room visit. She cannot get it out. So she brings them all down to the bathroom in the movie theater, and the kids are like, ah, we're missing the movie. So she's trying to prompt her to blow her nose, blow her nose. Well, meanwhile, all the kids form a semicircle around her, and they're like, sneeze, 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 sneeze. <laughs> so finally she gets, uh, she dislodges it, so we avoided the emergency room that one night, so it all worked out. All right. So then... <laughs> So Tyler, when you're on a cold Whidbey Island night, watching a movie, snuggled in front of the couch, and Hope's like, I could go for a really warm bucket of popcorn right now. Beware. Make sure all those kernels are popped. Okay. <laughs> so Hope, uh, Kim is having Hope and all the cousins sleep over again, uh, having a sleepover. 
She's acting a little rambunctious. The kids are complaining. She's getting in their way. She's being kind of a little bit of a scutch, a pain. So, she, <laughs> so she's, she's like, Hope, you know what? Go up to your room. You got a time out. So Hope doesn't want to miss anything that's going on in the living room. Which, so she walks to the top of the, the stair landing. And instead of going to her room, sits on the stair landing and sticks her head between the balusters of the, <laughs> of, of the stairs and gets her head stuck. So... Again, again, Kim is thinking, I'm going to have to call the fire department. This is going to involve jaws of life and uh, emergency responses. So she decides to give it one last try to get, get her uh, out of the stairs. She butters her head up with about a pound of Vaseline, <laughs> grabs a face full of hope, and does the old one, two, three, and she manages to pop her out. So the, Tyler, the reason I'm bringing this up is I know you guys are house hunting. You have to make sure that all your stair balusters are at least one to two inches more narrow than Hope's head. Because you never know where that'll go. So the, Hope is a very intelligent, imaginative person. She has a, a, uh, she's a voracious reader, and uh, she has a, um, a very uh, developed sense of um, imagination. So as children... We started getting phone calls from the neighbors and her classmates. <laughs> and they're like, you know, could you really, your, your daughter is telling the kids that there was a murderer in the neighborhood. And, and, and she told one of our, like, a, uh, one of the children that live a few houses away, whose uh, mom called Kim and said, uh, and she told Joseph that not only were they, was there a murder that took place in our house before we lived there? But it happened in his bedroom. So now he refuses to sleep in his bedroom, and he wants to sleep in our bed with us every night. So could you please have us speak to her about that? So this is kind of goes out to the whole Vescona's family. When you're with your brothers and sisters and your nieces and nephews, you, re you really have to hear um, her stories beforehand to maybe edit them a little bit to make sure she doesn't scare the crap out of uh, all the young kids in your house. <laughs> but on a, on a more serious note, Hope went away for um, vacation in her senior year of her graduate school. She came back and she walked into the house and the first thing she says to Kim and I is, I just met my future husband. And so we're like, um, wow, that seems like a kind of a rushed type of situation and it made us a little nervous because Hope is a very special person. And... <laughs> She's very intelligent, caring. She really lives by the golden rule and treats people with love and courtesy and respect. And, we're, and we were thinking, you know what, it's, it would be a, a rare find if she found somebody that would, can match her character and the values that she has internalized. Uh, and <clears throat> as we got to know Tyler, he was her equal in every way. And we realized that they were like two pieces of a puzzle that you could have a million pieces of a puzzle out there, but only two will fit together. And it was, Kim and I really were like, you know, the universe has made them cross paths for a reason. They were destined to be together. And uh, they, they don't belong with anybody but each other. And it was, uh, thank you. Uh, welcome to the family, Tyler. We're very proud to have you as our son-in-law. And uh, you guys are definitely meant to be together. And the, and the stories that we tell, I mean, every, everybody here in their own family has their own popcorn in the nose story on the head because that's the good stuff in life, right? When you sit down with your family and your friends around the kitchen table and you reminisce and tell stories, it's not about the big house you bought and the new car you bought and the raise you got to work. That stuff is really not important. You talk about the things that you brought you love and joy and happiness in your life. And it's always going to be those type of stories. And we all wish those things upon Hope and Tyler because as they write the book of their lives, we want it to be filled with that type of joy and happiness and uh, those, that adventure and those type of reminiscings. And Hope th has brought all those things into our lives and we know she will bring those things into your life. And uh, we can't wait to see what... Uh, the future holds, and we all want to be a part of it, and it's going to be great. Yeah. So if everybody will raise their glasses to Hope and Tyler. It's your shot of limoncello.
The limoncello, I'm sorry. You know what? You can drink whatever you want to drink. It's all, it's all good. Ah, the bright said limoncello. Limoncello only. Everyone's trying to drink. Health, happiness, love. Salute, everybody. Raise a glass. Thank you. So before I get started, I just wanted to say thank you to the Vasconeses and the Strifflers for hosting us this weekend. And Tyler and Hope, I know you guys put so much detail into this night. And I think I speak for everyone when I say it came out perfect. So. <laughs> I'm not as talented as Joe Striffler, so I have to read some notes. <laughs> so for those of you who may not know me, Hope and I met in high school and have known each other for over a decade. In high school, Hope and I were always close friends, but after college, our friendship has continued to get even stronger and develop as we have both grown up, moved away from home, and gone through other big life changes. Hope is the type of friend that you want by your side through these kind of things. She's always supportive, a good listener, and there when you need someone to talk to. In high school, I always knew there was something really special about Hope. Even at that age, when everyone else was all wrapped up in their own little world and absorbed with the details of their own lives, Hope was always a person who genuinely cared what others had to say, willing to help them think through tough situations and offered advice, then when looking back at it now, I realized was so insightful for a teenager. <laughs> Knowing that Hope was the most welcoming, supportive, and just all around positive person to be around, I always knew the guy that she would be with would be the luckiest guy in the world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After college, I moved to a new city and Hope was one of the first people to come visit me. Having her come visit me helped me adjust to a new situation with ease. Hope is the type of friend that you could call that day and say you're in need of a friend's weekend and she would drive hours to come see you and make it happen. It was a few days after one of Hope's visits that she told me to want it, she wanted to come back and visit me again. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my spot. <laughs> Hope is an amazing friend, like I said, and would drop anything if you needed her, but she had just visited me the week before, so I grew suspicious of an ulterior motive. <laughs> she confessed that she had actually met a guy on spring break that went to the Naval Academy, so she was planning to spend some time that weekend with him too, confirming my suspicions. <laughs> when Hope got to DC, she was glowing, telling me about this guy how blue his eyes were, how perfect his hair was, how smart he was, and he could even navigate himself using just the stars. <laughs> at, the <laughs> at the time, I thought she was crazy. Me and the Uber driver both did. <laughs> we had an unspoken moment like, okay, sure, sweetie, this guy you met on spring break is definitely your husband. <laughs> If only he could see us now. <laughs> I was excited that Hope felt this way, but I was trying to remind her to approach things realistically. <laughs> that weekend was the first weekend that I met Tyler. And as a best friend, it's one of the most, sorry, <laughs> comforting feelings in the world <laughs> to see your best friend with a guy that compliments her so well. I immediately took a looking to Tyler the minute I met him. He was outgoing, personable, and so warm. But the thing I liked most about him was how I could tell how happy he made Hope. <laughs> that entire weekend, Tyler was so attentive to Hope, listening to every word of her sometimes very long stories <laughs> and paying attention to the smallest of details. I just remember thinking, wow, Hope might actually be right about this guy being her husband. There is a really good feeling that you get when you know someone so well before they meet their partner, and then when you see them together, you see all the best qualities in your friend get so enhanced by being in the presence of the other. Hope and Tyler have always been a couple that I love spending time with. The energy that they have together is infectious, and it really is a role model for what couples should look like. <laughs> I am so happy that I'm standing here by my best friend's side, watching her marry the best guy in the world for her. I wish you two nothing but eternal happiness, and I'm so excited to continue to watch your life and your relationship grow and evolve. Tyler, you truly are the luckiest guy that you have the love, unwavering loyalty, and support of Hope Striffler. 
No situation or challenge in life is something that she can't tackle. If there is one thing my friendship with Hope has taught me, it's that if you really want something in life, it's up to you to make it happen. And I know she's going to live every day working to make you the happiest guy in the world. <laughs> so, with that being said, <laughs> cheers to the Vasconeses on a lifetime of happiness. I love you both so much. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, if I haven't introduced myself, I should think everyone uh, probably knows my name. I'm David. Uh, Tyler's. Yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm the best man, first off. Uh, yeah, thank you for everybody coming out here. I know it's not easy uh, to come out to the wedding, but, you know, after one uh, wedding that was canceled, we postponed it, and, you know, we made it work and hope it is a beautiful venue. Y'all crushed it for this one, so I'm glad everybody can make it out for the wedding. Um, second, I do get a little nervous uh, when I speak, uh, so I was like asking around like some tips and tricks of, of what to do. So uh, I think Griffin gave me the idea. Yeah, just picture everybody in their underwear. Um, so first off, you know, bridesmaids, y'all look beautiful tonight. Um, congrats, y'all look great, y'all look great. Um, but uh, yeah, so... <laughs> all right, now we're good, right? We're, we're all shaking out. Um, but uh, yeah, so Tyler and I, we, uh, we first met plebe year, uh, freshman year. We uh, just got through the suck together. It, it was an awful time. I uh, didn't really know him too much during freshman year, but I think we really got to know each other uh, that first summer after freshman year where we were stuck on a 44-foot sailboat with uh, eight other guys. So you really get to know someone when you're stuck on a sailboat going from uh, Annapolis to Newport, Rhode Island and back. So it's four nights there, three nights back. But uh, me and Tyler just, you know, we figured out, hey, you know what? We're in the same company. We'll, we'll keep uh, hanging out. And uh, I think our relationship grew from there. Going into sophomore year and junior year, uh, we had a couple classes together here and there. Uh, he was always there to help me out. In fact, we had vocab words of the day because uh, I grew up speaking a lot of Spanish. So I didn't know a lot of vocab words like ambidextrous. Didn't know what that meant <laughs> until, uh, until Tyler told me one day. So... Yeah, Tyler was there every day to give me a vocab word and help me out with uh, math homework. Um, he was always there. Like, it didn't, didn't matter what day it was. He's always there for me. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, freshman, junior year was great for us. Or, I'm sorry, freshman through junior year was great. But um, senior year, uh, I'm sorry, let me backtrack. Junior year, uh, <laughs> I thought I really knew Tyler, but uh, it came his 21st birthday. Um, I had been 21 for a year already. And so I got to kind of show him around, show him some bars here and there. Um, you know, I, I had like the, the tour for him. I, I was ready for him. Uh, little did we know that night, um, I think Wisconsin might have lost, it's okay. But um, the, <laughs> Griffin knows it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it, that's not the fact though. Uh, the, the bar Buddies, it's a crab shack. Um, they actually just serve crab all day and they turn into a dance floor at night. Uh, crowned a new king that night. Tyler Vascona has showed up and he tore up the dance floor so hard. They had a new king of buddies uh, from then on out. I mean, every time he was out, we had our routine. Yeah, you dropped your, you, yeah, you dropped your crown over here, buddy. It's okay. I'll pick it up later. Um, yeah, Tyler just killed it. Every weekend we would uh, do the same routine. You know, so a Krabby Patty, Krabby Tots, something like that, beer towers. And then he's got to tear up the dance floor. So uh, I was just trying to keep up with him on the dance floor. He, I don't know where he was half the time, but we always ended up back. Uh, back in our rooms safely, so don't worry about that. Um, but then, uh, so after seeing who Tyler was, like when he kind of broke out of his shell a little bit, uh, I invited him to join me and my other roommate into a three-man. Um, I don't think Tyler knew what he was getting himself into, living with me and my buddy Tom Lacey, uh, because within about a month, Tyler was fired from his job. Uh, <laughs> so, so I think I owe him like a rice cooker and like a George Foreman, because that's what we got in trouble for. We were cooking food all day. Um, but yeah, he, I think he like kind of relaxed after that. He realized, all right, school doesn't really matter. We're going to graduate. <laughs> it's okay. Like, it's fine. If, if Tom Lacey and David Cassidy didn't get through it, it's okay. So um, he, I think he relaxed after that and just, you know, he, he was fine. And that's when he uh, emerged as the coziest person I ever knew. Because this man would just lay around all day. He goes, ah, my schoolwork's done. We're good. And I would just see him there in a full sweat, you know, full, full grout fit. Just killing it. Um, so I think uh, that, was, that was a good little wake-up period for Tyler living with us. He realized what he was getting himself into um, because I think he came up with the idea to go to Daytona for spring break. 
which was, you know, the highlight of, of his senior year for sure. Um, so I'll clarify some rumors first about Daytona. Um, <laughs> so yes, uh, I was the first one to get Hope's number that weekend. Uh, <laughs> Just, be, just because, just because, hold on, hold on. I'm clarifying the rumors. Uh, uh, I was the only one with the phone. Hope was the only one with the phone. I didn't have my phone. Yeah, we're the oldest ones in the group, so we, were, we have to be the mature ones, right? Um, so I, I just knew, though, from that day um, when Hope and Julia, uh, when they came up to us, like, hey, y'all play volleyball? And yes, Hope was the worst one out of anybody on, on the uh, volleyball court. It's, okay, it, it got Tyler's attention, which was great. Um, <laughs> But I think, uh, yeah, after playing volleyball with them, I got her number. I was like, all right, y'all's group needs to hang out with our group. And little did we know, it turned into like a mini honeymoon, um, which was, you know, it was great. Uh, they, they hit it off from there. Um, you know, lived with Tyler for another three months. He was making all these trips, you know, D.C., Rochester, everything like that. And, and we've, we've all heard these stories, so I'm not going to double back on those. But um, I just knew that there was something different about Hope. Um, I didn't really, I never really asked Tyler about, you know, his relationship life or anything like that, but I just, I could just tell uh, Hope was the one. Um, it was just, I don't know, it was just there for Tyler. He was making six-hour drives, and I, I had never seen him, like, just drive to D.C., so uh, there you go. Yeah, break the rule. You got to break the rules a couple times, right? Um, but, yeah, it was just, it was great for y'all. Uh, I'm glad that y'all were able to continue to see each other and, you know, grow in the relationship that y'all have, and y'all are still growing today. Um, I still learn a lot from y'all's relationship. I can't give relationship advice. But I will give advice to you, Hope, for Tyler, real quick. Um, just a couple things, not, not too much. Uh, um, so Sundays, right? Sun, you know this by now. Sundays are a big day for Tyler. Fantasy football is all over. But if you want to hear a word from him or you don't, so if you don't want to hear a word from him all Sunday, just get Red Zone Package. It's very cheap for Tyler to just shut up all day. And you have your day to do whatever you want with Bo and, and all your la- uh, girlfriends. That's all you have to do. Um, yeah, if Tyler wants to talk to you about his workouts, just let him. It's okay. Uh, we, we all know you work out, Tyler. It's okay, all right? It, it, it's okay. Just, just listen to him, and it's over in about 10 minutes, okay? Um, and lastly, I already mentioned before, but uh, he is the coziest person I know. So if you ever run out of gift ideas, because, you know, December 4th is his birthday, two presents in one month. The 4th. Come on. Uh, yeah, so because, you know, you got two gifts in one month, just get him... Go to Amazon, get the basic hoodie, plain color, and that's all he needs. I mean, he is set. He is set. And then that's all you need from him. Um, but yeah, uh, congrats to you two. I'm really excited that we were able to make this work out. I know it was not the first option, but uh, this was a beautiful venue. I'm glad everybody got to come out, uh, got to meet everybody. You know, if it was a 300-person wedding, I don't know if we'd uh, see everybody, right? So uh, I'm glad you all came out. And if everybody raised their glasses with me, and cheers to Tyler and Hope. Across the room, like a dream movie scene. What's a country boy to do with those red lips and those blue jeans? My heart's skipping a beat. She's that pure kind of authentic, that top shelf kind of thing. She's southern girl. To leave with her hanging on her arm. We'll pick up lines and gonna fly. She don't fall for a town charge. She's southern gold. Empty night. The way she moves. Love can see fight. Smooth and slow. Everybody knows. You gotta put her in a love song. She's southern gold. Oh my, my. So beautiful. Make a poem and cry. There she goes. Everybody knows. You gotta put her in I've been hooked on 
those red lips Since I finally got that kiss Struck it rich And now I get I get to put her in a love song She's southern cold 